there's a feeling. The pulse of eternal knowledge. When you sense the oneness, you are with us. We brought life to Earth. You can't see us, but we flourish all around you. Everywhere. In everything. And even inside you. Whether you believe in us or not. From your first breath to your last. In darkness and in the light, we are the oldest and youngest. We are the largest and smallest. We are the wisdom of a billion years. We are creation. We are resurrection, condemnation, and regeneration. We are mushrooms. Mushrooms are very clandestine and very much the trickster. So they're hiding from you all the time. Fungi are the grand molecular decomposers of nature. And what does that mean? Well, they break down wood. And here I'm laying in the forest. I haven't peaked yet, but here's a piece of wood laying down on the ground. If I was laying down on the ground and I died, fungi would leap up to recycle me. Well, that's the way of nature. Mushrooms represent rebirth, rejuvenation, regeneration. Fungi generate soil that gives life. The task that we face today is to understand the language of nature. My mission is to discover the language of nature of the fungal networks that communicate with the ecosystem. And I believe nature is intelligent. The fact that we lack the language skills to communicate with nature does not impugn the concept that nature is intelligent. It speaks to our inadequacy for communication. If we don't get our act together and come in commonality and understanding with the organisms that sustain us today, not only will we destroy those organisms, but we will destroy ourselves. Mushroom, not like a vegetable, and it's not like an animal, but it's somewhere in between. The fungus is its own kingdom altogether. There's over 1.5 million species. That's six times more than plants. Of all those species of fungi, about 20,000 produce mushrooms. And mushrooms come in an incredible diversity of shapes and sizes and colors and lifestyles. There are even bioluminescent mushrooms. A lot of people are afraid of mushrooms. People associate mushrooms and fungi, you know, mold, with death and decay, which makes sense. You know, there's a lot of fear because of fungi's role in the cycle of life. 
they decompose dead and dying organisms and move all those nutrients back into the cycle. They kind of are at the very end of stuff, but they're also at the beginning. Every time you pick up a mushroom, you are faced with the omnivore's dilemma. Do I know enough to eat this? Should I eat this? Will this kill me? And that's one of the reasons why people are freaked out about mushrooms, because, yeah, there are ones that can kill you. There are some that'll take out your liver or your kidneys. But to be honest with you, there's berries in the woods that can kill you, too. So it's, it's really a matter of knowing your mushrooms. If we didn't have fungi, we would get this buildup of plant matter that would choke the earth. I mean, they really are the key. They break down plant life and make it usable for new plant life and for animal life. Mushrooms are the fruiting bodies of fungi, so the mushroom is like the apple. The bulk of the organism is growing underground, and it's composed of these long threads. And these threads grow one cell at a time, and then they branch and rebranch, growing in every direction they can, even three-dimensionally. And that mass of threads is called a mycelium. The stick falls onto the ground, I pull it up, and there's mycelium. It is virtually everywhere. A mycelium has more networks than our brain has neural pathways, and works in much the same way with electrolytes, electrical pulses. They're the most common species on Earth. They're everywhere. Just to give you an idea of how much fungi are in the forest, as you're walking through, it's about 300 miles of fungi under every footstep that you take, and that's all over the world. And they form these massive links, it's like a big web, just growing through the forest. Mycelium that can grow out even just this big can have trillions, literally trillions, of end branches. Almost everyone knows about the computer internet. The mycelium shares the same network design. Trees are communicating using the mycelium as pathways. They're connecting one tree to another. They're using the mycelium too to feed one another. In other words, one tree can swap nutrients with another tree using mycelium as the passageway. We are all of the stars. My kingdom was born from the heavens four and a half billion years ago. We are the pioneers. We climbed out of the sea to create the fertile soil and set the stage for all of life. South Africa, in the sediments of lava, they have found fungus-like organisms, mycelium fossils in the lava, 2.4 billion years old. This is the oldest record of a multicellular organism on Earth. This year, another fossil was found in the sediments of Brazil. It's 113 million years old, and it's a perfectly shaped mushroom. We divided from fungi about 650 million years ago. One branch led to fungi, the other branch led to animals. We chose the path of encirculating our nutrients in a cellular sac, a stomach. The mycelium remained underground, externally digesting its nutrients. Biodiversity surged. great cataclysmic extinction events. And when the asteroids impacted the Earth, bam, he 
enormous amounts of debris was jettisoned in the atmosphere. Sunlight was cut off. Plants die, animals die, and fungi inherited the earth. From these extinction events, there's one lesson. Those organisms that paired with fungi survived. We are more closely related to fungi than we are to any other kingdom. What this means is that we are descendants of mycelium. Mycelium is the mother of us all. A mycelium can theoretically live forever, as long as it has food to grow into, which is why the oldest and largest organism on Earth is a fungus. It lives on top of a mountain in Oregon. It's like thousands of acres and it's thousands of years old. The mushroom is the organ of sexual reproduction for the spore of the fungus. Fungi don't have seeds, they have spores. The spores are extremely tiny, little lightweight gene-carrying systems. When they land on something they can eat, they break down the food that they're on and then reabsorb the nutrients because you need to move on and find another place where there's food. The mushroom releases zillions of spores into the atmosphere. There's so many spore. I mean, you take one breath, you just breathed in 10 fungal spore. So they are everywhere. We've evolved with them. When you see what mushrooms do, it's kind of spooky in the most wonderful way. I mean, they correct everything on Earth. They support life, they convert life, they carry life. They're remarkable beings. If humans become extinct, what's the next species that will take over the Earth? Maybe mycelium already are the dominant species, not just because they're the most common species on Earth, they're everywhere. I mean, you look at humans, there's seven billion of us, but we're just one little creature wandering around incredibly vulnerable and don't survive easily if we're assaulted. Hurricane Harvey has started to make landfall here on the Texas coast. More than 30,000 people are without power and things are only expected to get worse. Climate change is one of the biggest threats uh, to our present world, to the future of our planet. We do more than make mushrooms. We have the ability to do so much more than just break down matter. Like the fruit of our labor, most of you have only scratched the surface of our usefulness. We are the changers. That our prehistoric ancestors, they had come across the plants that do alter consciousness. And the idea is our ancestors, they came out of the trees and went across the savannah, would be tracking animals that were pooping. Well, in the subtropics, the most common mushroom coming out of those cow patties is Slosophy commensis, a potent magic mushroom. 